what's up you guys time for the movie retrospective so we're doing uh some more redneck exploitation hicksploitation whatever you want to call it yeah <laughs> so uh, a little while back we covered the splatter classic 2000 maniacs uh one of herschel gordon lewis's blood trilogy good movie and uh, it was, yeah. Yes. Uh, honestly, you know, it's it's very uh, crude on uh, by today's standards. Came out in 1964, uh, you know. So if you want to watch that review, we did that before too. But I kind of got curious because I knew that there had been a remake, sequel, something or other uh, that had been done in the mid 2000s that had Robert England in it. And I just noticed that it was on Tubi, and I was just kind of like, maybe we should do that one too because I'm really curious to see uh how it came out yeah i didn't know robert england did any documentaries because <laughs> that's what this is. this is this is a documentary on the south it is it a this is actually okay so i think because it was called 2001 maniacs i think for a long time this was actually the first time i had seen it uh the remake so I guess that I mistakenly thought that it was a sequel. It's not really a sequel. It's more like a remake or reboot. like a soft reboot. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much the same story. It's just kind of like updated and tweaked a little bit. More, more comedy, more sex. Uh, yeah. It's very, very yeah. smutty and very, very gory. Hot, hot chicks in it. They're, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, and good-looking guys. If you're, if you're some girl, you want this for eye candy, bunch of young people in it bunch of trying young people to get, trying to get it on <laughs> bunch, of, bunch of young people they got fucking sexy ass gap tooth fucking redneck girls with fucking pants all bunched up and shit fucking yeah man running, those those uh running those running short shorts were like way the hell up in her yeah. uh, up in her cooch this thing is so historically accurate you know, it's <laughs> not, it's fucking, you know, all the costumes the accents are all accurate <laughs> I'm fucking with you. No. Well, I mean, yeah. I will say yeah. um, that, well, some of the actors that were in it, like the guy that played like the Ashley Wilkes, like the, the Southern gentleman type yeah. dude, uh, that dude is actually, I think he's from Florida. Okay. And a couple of other people that were in it, like the guy that played the dude that was from Connecticut, but said, no, I'm really from South Carolina. He's actually from Texas. Yeah. So some of the people in this were Southern. And honestly, um, Robert England, you know, not Southern, but... He's just so fun okay. to watch because he's obviously having like such a fucking blast, like hamming yeah. it up in this. Yeah. So you know, so I, I'm, to, I'm forgiving it. He, he, yeah, he tries to do like a southern aristocratic cracker fucking accent. But... And he has a Confederate flag uh, For his eye, eye patch, patch. Yeah. which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so although any... I will point out again, that is not the Confederate. Flag. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's why I kind of like left a gap because yeah. I knew you. Were, I knew you were gonna like well actually about that. But everybody, that's what everybody calls it so that's yeah. just what i call it too yeah. i know that's technically that's not correct. yeah it was a battle flag of the north virginia army i think what it was but called. uh yeah so so yeah so i was thinking the whole time before i'd seen this that it was a sequel because it was called 2001 maniacs apparently the reason they called it 2001 maniacs is because originally this was supposed to come out in 2001 uh, you know, the year, but, uh, somehow, you know, obviously as happens with movies, sometimes it kind of got pushed back. So it didn't actually come out until 2005. So this was actually directed by Tim Sullivan, who he hasn't done a shit ton of stuff. Uh, he made a movie called Driftwood, I think the year after this, and he was a director on that, uh, Scream Queens series that VH1 did. Yeah. Um, but he started out as a uh, self-proclaimed monster kid. So he started out back in the early 80s, like working, doing special effects and shit like that. Um, he actually shows up as a cameo. So there's a lot of cameos in this uh, movie as well. So we'll kind of get into that. But uh, yeah, so I think this movie cost about $3 million. It's pretty low budget, but... It doesn't really look it. It doesn't really look it. It's, no. I mean, you know, the, the production design and stuff like that, it's very workmanlike. They did actually shoot it in Georgia, where it's supposed to be taking place. And, you know, like you said, some of the costumes aren't period accurate and stuff yeah. like that. But like Most, I said, oh, none of them really this are. Is, yeah, this yeah. is essentially just a sex and gore yeah. farce. It's a comedy. Yeah. Um, and... It really, honestly, I was surprised at how closely it, it really kind of like hewed to the spirit of the original. Yeah. But they just like 
up to the gore. There's more victims. They tweaked a few things that actually I'm going to say improved it a little bit because they actually, it sort of like makes more sense yeah. in some ways than the original did, which yeah, I'll get into. I think the original had, had editing problems. I think some certain things got edited out. They forgot to mention certain aspects of the story, I think. Yeah, or, maybe. Or it, it just didn't explain it real well all the time. But th this is a better movie inspired by the first one. It's in the same it's in the same spirit of it like she said. The execution's a lot better. It's it's more modern. Um, yeah. More entertaining this more entertaining. The first one was entertaining because you're looking at it and going, man, this is 1964. It was way ahead of its time. Yeah, big for time. Six, for 64. I mean, like I said, it's very crude. Right. But but the gore and the shocking the shocking elements of it, you know what I mean, where they're just, they're, 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 they're having people laughing and having a good time while they're killing people. You know what I mean? Fucking because of the Civil War. In really horrifying ways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah, so, like, wow. I mean, I, yeah, the the original one, you could tell that, you know, he had made, H.G. Lewis had made Blood Feast, obviously, before that, but you could tell that it was just kind of like, we have these fun gore scenes, and we're just, like, kind of hanging a movie around it. This one's kind of like that, too, but I don't know. So, in that sense, it does, like, you know, keep the spirit of the original. It's very, very, uh, you know, kind of... I don't know if it's, if you say juvenile, that sounds kind of like negative, but this is just like a balls to the wall, gory, you know, there's titties everywhere. Yeah. There's like really like politically incorrect uh, jokes, like yeah. jokes about black people, jokes about Asians, jokes yeah. about like, so there's all kind of shit like that, like jokes about gay men, yeah. all kind of shit like that. And it's just unabashedly having a good time with it. Nobody's taking it seriously. Everybody yeah. looks like they're having a good time making it. Yeah. And consequently, it's a good time watching it. Rob Zombie would like this movie. Yeah, this I'm definitely sure. seems like yeah, something it, it's, in his it's up there with what Kind of like, imagine if Deliverance was a horror movie. It had a lot <laughs> of hot chicks in it. They make Deliverance jokes in the movie, too. Yeah, because there is one yeah. character who has a girlfriend that's a sheep named he, Jezebel. Yeah. And they have, like, a whole bunch of jokes. It's like a running gag of him, like, running around, like, pulling his pants up, going, she's playing hard to get, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, that type of stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot of sheep yeah, fucking jokes. Yeah, everybody <laughs> everybody is some kind of stereotype. Yeah. The ghosts and and the Yankees, them too. Yeah, they're, they're all stereotypes. Yeah, this does... Nobody's safe in this one. This does kind of have, because uh, I do kind of feel like in the early to mid 2000s, because you know I, I always say that I'm not a big fan of 90s horror, and I'm not a big fan of like early 2000s. I don't even know if it's 90s. I think it's like mid 90s to mid 2000s, because there were so many like slasher knockoffs and so many remakes. This is a remake too, but to be honest with you, I don't, it doesn't bother me as much that they remade this, because the first one, even though it's very iconic for being one of the first of its kind, a, a gore film, um, you know, it was so crude that it could really do with an update. Yeah. Uh, one thing about the mid 2000s though, is that everybody in this looks like they should be in like Nickelback or something. Yeah. Like, or who was the band, who was the shitty band that came after that? Uh, like Nickelback. I can't remember, but, but it's like, like, no, that was before. Yeah, before. Okay. That was like, no. And Foo Fighters were actually good. Yeah, they, that was the, good. that was yeah. Dave Grohl from yeah. Nirvana. I'm just trying to figure out who you would, I'm talking about like kind of all the douche rock bands oh, like shit. from like the late 90s and why can't I think of any of their uh, names except for I'm not even thinking of Nickelback. Uh, I wasn't I can't paying think, attention. I wasn't either really. I wasn't paying but uh but yeah, so everybody you everybody is very very like uh blandly you know good looking and they all have like the the dudes all have the spiky hair with the frosted tips yeah. and that kind of stuff. But see, you're not really supposed to I feel like you're not really supposed to like any of the college they're, kids yeah, cuz they're really obnoxious. <laughs> You're not even really supposed to like the black biker guy. You're not really supposed to like anybody, anybody in this movie, yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> He's the only one that looks different from anybody else in terms of stylistically. He shows up on a damn, some kind of fucking cruiser. It wasn't a, it wasn't a Harley Davidson. He had a Chinese girlfriend, but he's all fucking buffed out and shit. Fucking, he stood out. The rest of them, like you said, were kind of generic. Yeah, so what you have, and you, well, you kind of have... He actually knew something was up with the ghosts. He tried to fight. He goes, man, there's something not right about this. You know, I've never seen a town without a hot, without hot black girls. <laughs> there's just a lot of jokes Yeah, where are the shit. hot black bitches? Yeah, where, yeah, yeah, <laughs> fucking funny. 
Like well, yeah, and then and one of the things too, and this is what I mean about this having like a lot of like quote unquote politically incorrect jokes in it, is that when he shows up, like one of the first things that happens is that there's another black man who lives in the town, and he like offers him a plate with like a big slice of watermelon on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the dude's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, he's, <laughs> you know what I they mean? They don't really explain it. He's a ghost. Uh, he, uh, he, he's uh, the butcher most of the time. Yeah, it's, it's the same, it was the same guy as that was the butcher, right? It was I think butchering so, yeah. the bodies up. Yeah, 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 that's right. And um, I guess it just goes back to the beginning of the movie where the fucking Yankees are at university just laughing it up during the history lesson of the Civil War and the and the and the and, and the uh, the professor's like, yeah, laugh it up, you know what I mean? In this battle, you, you in this battle, you know what? What, what was it? Ninety thousand or in this war was it ninety thousand? No, it was more than that. It was six hundred eighty thousand. No, you know, like you're that. talking about how many innocent Southern civilians were just fucking killed, slaughtered, fucking haphazardly. So I guess that that black guy was just one of the people that the Union Army just fucking slaughtered haphazardly because he was in there to get revenge. That ghost. Interestingly, yeah, this has because I kind of feel like the original. It just it has a little bit like where it is establishing the characters and then they get like to the town which is called Pleasant Valley. In this one they have that little prologue type thing with some of the douchey college students in the class. Now the teacher, you yeah. asked me about that cuz you were like, "Oh man, that dude, he's like in everything." He sounds German to me. Yeah. Uh he's Swedish actually. Swedish, okay. Uh yeah, his name is Peter Stormare. Stormare, Stormari, can't remember how to pronounce his it's last name. It's a good name. sign when he shows up in the movie because I like every movie I've seen him. He was in The Big Lebowski. Yeah. Uh, he was in John Wick 2. Yeah. Uh Lost yeah. World, Jurassic Park, The Lost World. He yeah. was in like a fuck ton of stuff because yeah. I immediately like recognized him. Tends to be in good movies. Yeah, he was a chocolate. That's a good one. He was in Armageddon. Yeah. He was in like a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's Swedish actually, not okay. German. But he plays like pretty because he has that indefinable accent. Yeah. He always plays, he plays Germans or Italians or whatever. Um, yeah, so this movie also stars, like I said, Robert England, who's playing like the mayor role uh, from the original uh, movie. You also have Lynn Shay. Who, I love her in everything. She's fantastic. She's in a fuck ton of horror movies. Yeah. She was in uh, Dead End. She's been in some of the... She, wasn't she in some of the fucking Conjuring movies? Or the Insidious movies or whatever. She was in that. She And she just like... Um, she looks like she's having a fucking blast too. She plays yeah. Granny Boone in this. And uh, let's talk about some of the cameos. Because there's a fuck ton of cameos in this. Now, uh, first cameo that you'll probably recognize uh, is Eli Roth, who was uh, one of the producers on this film as well. And he plays a guy who's inexplicably throwing dead armadillos on, <laughs> on the car thing to get people to come to the town, I'm guessing. Well, I thought he was trying to sell window, window uh, cleaners. Oh, jobs. yeah, maybe. That maybe. was his grift. Yeah. Throw a damn... It wasn't the whole armadillo, it was just a shell. Yeah, it didn't have like the inside, but it was still yeah. like bloody and yeah, stuff. He, he the like, inside, that was yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Eli Roth yeah. turns up in this. Uh, he said later that the character that he's playing in this is actually supposed to be the same character is supposed to be the character Justin from his movie Cabin Fever, which you know, very popular movie, which came out a couple years before this. Uh, there's also a cameo by country singer Travis Tritt who plays kind of like the redneck gas station attendant yeah. uh, where at the gas station they stop character. out yeah. yeah before they get there uh, there's a blink and you'll miss it cameo by none other than Kane Hodder uh, who's basically just like holding one of the victims and you just see him for a second although if you look at the credits um, his name his character's name is actually Jason so he yeah. does actually play one of the uh, one of the townsfolk and then there's also uh, the director, Tim Sullivan, makes a cameo as the guy, like, hammering the coffin. And I didn't even realize this because I thought this dude looked kind of familiar. There's another cameo by Adam Robitel, who was the guy that wrote and directed uh, one of my favorite found footage movies of all time, The Taking of Deborah Logan. And he also directed Escape Room, which, remember, we saw that in the theater, and uh, Insidious, The Last Key. So he's in there as well. So I thought that was kind of cool. So it's like, it's, it's like kind of fucking spot the horror legend in this. Um, also, this is super weird, and I this just goes to show how fucking small the world is. So the woman that's in this that plays the milk jug lady, you know what I mean? The one that's making all the jokes about her jugs and, and yeah. whatnot. Uh, that's Krista Campbell, and she's been in a bunch of movies, one of which was the 2011 remake of The Mechanic. 
that okay. Charles Bronson movie that we yeah, were okay. just talking about the original the other day. Yeah. She was also in the Wicker Man remake. Yep. <laughs> the bees, the bees, and the I like that. Movie, and the actually. Day of the Dead remake. We should yeah. probably do that yeah. one of these days. Um, but yeah. So what happens in this movie? Pretty much the same thing that happens in the original movie, which is there's actually it's two carloads. Okay, one of the cars has three college kids. The other car has two girls and a guy. And then there's a motorcycle with a guy and his girlfriend on the back. Now, all of them are heading down to Daytona Beach, my hometown, for spring break. Uh, but they kind of get lost or off track in Georgia somewhere. And uh, just as in the original movie, you know, they have the sign like saying the detour that leads them to this town. Now, uh, in the original movie, that's one thing that I think that they kind of did a little bit better in this one. In the original movie, everybody just decided to stay, even though they were all like heading somewhere to do like important shit. Like, hey, I have a conference, like a work conference or something like that. Why would you stay in this town for like two days, even if they did give you like a free hotel room and stuff? In this one, it's still not super believable, but these are just college kids. They're going to spring break. They don't have anywhere to be specifically. And they're just kind of like, hey, we're getting free food and free hotel rooms. And there's hot babes here. So, okay, yeah. whatever. I don't think the biker and his girlfriend were college, though. No, they weren't. But yeah. I think they were going down to Daytona. I was. Yes. I, I think they were still going to Daytona. Yeah, they were in though. like the convoy type deal. Yeah. So, so there is like a slightly better reason for yeah. the people to stay in the town than there was in the original. I will give it that. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so then the townsfolk uh, are very old-fashioned, let's call it that, very old-fashioned southern, uh, southern hospitality. There's kind of, like, all of the stereotypes, like, like I said, like, the inbred dude, like, fucking the sheep, uh, you know, and various other things. And uh, then all of the college students, the Yankees, start getting picked off one by one. Yeah. Uh, first of which, uh, the girl... That she, what's her name? Her name's Cat, right? Because they call her like Pussy Cat. She makes all yeah. kind of like pussy jokes. Yeah. Um. Now she gets pulled apart by horses. Yeah, drawn a quarter. Here. Which uh, which actually happened to a guy in the yeah. original, but of course they couldn't show it as much. They just kind of showed like a thing. This one, uh, the effect is pretty good. I think that most of the effects in this are practical. Yeah. Uh, there is some CG, and you can tell because I think the one part where she pulls apart, I think that that is practical but like you know overlaid with cg but it still looks pretty good i gotta say so she gets pulled apart like her arms and legs get pulled off and she dies and then um but there are some there's some really good gore in this i really like the one guy that gets killed by the he gets killed by the milk jug girl right where she like puts the she's like oh i got some moonshine and she puts the fucking yeah. tube down his throat yeah and it's actually acid so yeah. it starts like dissolving him from inside, yeah, and like dissolves through the bed and shit. <laughs> and what? What were you gonna say? I was gonna say so you're gonna spoil all the kills on this. Well, no, I'm just okay. saying there's like really good yeah, kills yeah. in it. There's yeah. really good kills in it, you know. Yeah. And, and you get yeah, one, you get one guy who gets like skewered like through the ass and like yeah. out through the mouth. Yeah, and it's all kind of it's all kind of like a Pe couple people get squished. They're all kind of getting punished for their sins, basically, in a way. That's and true. It's, yeah. it's it's it's. it's it's kind of like the first movie, where they're kind of they're kind of killed based upon what their personalities are like and the shit that they're the ghosts are punishing them for their sins and you find out later that what it is is that they're trying to get even for all the people that were massacred in that town. There were two thousand and one of them that had to be massacred. That's how many two thousand and one Confederate citizens got massacred so they got to kill two thousand rogue union yet, yeah back in the civil war yeah it says they were massacred by rogue union garrison, or garrison whatever whatever, whatever. uh shit that if you read the history they were all kind of rogue it was fucking <laughs> place was fucking chaos and um so they got to kill 2001 to get even it's an eye for an eye type of fucking and they did something else in this one that I think like was better explained than yeah. in the original, which is nice because it's like this is just like a silly horror comedy with just yeah. ridiculous gore and tits yeah. and you know juvenile humor. Yeah. Um, but I like that they at least tried to like improve on a couple things from the original. Here's one thing that always bothered me about the original: the original was kind of based on it was like a redneck brigadoon, in yeah. the sense that you know a hundred years later. 
this town popped up as ghosts and were killing Yankees yeah. to get back at, you know, the people that killed them or whatever. Right. And I think in the original, they only needed to kill six people because it was like they were getting revenge for just the six people, the six Union troops that came and killed all the people in their town. This one, and I was just kind of like, well, the weird thing about the original is that I said these, the ghosts are acting like they've done this before, yeah. even though it's only been a hundred yeah. years. So this would be the first time that, that it happened. Whereas in this remake, they basically say uh, this town pops into existence for two days every year. And it will keep doing that until they've killed 2,001 yeah. people, which is every single person that was killed in the town. Yeah. So they keep coming back because at one point like one of the girls finds like this cabinet that has like mm -hmm. all these jars in it with like hands and eyeballs and shit like that and they're all like marked with different years yeah. so this happened every year so i said well okay that makes a lot more sense to me yeah. than just every hundred years this is popping and up. some of the ghost characters are like uh, you you know like you people killed my baby that kind of stuff you know so yeah 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 so they're all getting vengeance for each other and shit too you know they were because they're they were a bunch of families and uh, the ghosts are pretty interesting, you know. They got female ghosts, male ghosts, uh, a little boy ghost who's not a little boy playing the, the, the role. Uh, it's a it's a, an adult pretending to be a little boy. I didn't really get that. I guess they couldn't get a little kid to do and say the kind of shit that they needed. To say. <laughs> but uh, two of them are like these Gone with the Wind, Scarlet O'Hara looking ghosts, and they're dressed in kind of period clothes, and they're constantly making out with each other. And they're cousins. Yeah, and if, we find out later they're cousins. <laughs> and then, uh, which in the South, they didn't mean anything. <laughs> well, everybody's first cousins. Co everybody's cousins. Because <laughs> looking, marrying your cousin, that doesn't necessarily mean your first cousin. All right? Yeah. Because they, they, if you look at birth records, they, they didn't really do that. And the second and third cousins were married into your family, so they weren't really related to you. That's usually how it went. And then, like, I got cousins... That really I'm not related to at all. They're just kind of like the our, our traditions, at least back in Mississippi, up in places like Heidelberg and Laurel. The children of your dad's friends are your cousins. Yeah. So they're not related to you. It's just that your parents grew up with their parents, and their grandparents grew up with their parents. But there's no blood related. So everybody just everybody related. just kind of calls each other a cousin. It's, yeah. They're friends of the family as a cousin, you know. So that's a lot of times I think people from outside the South get kind of confused about that. Well, the thing about this movie, though, like I said, is that it's kind of playing with the Play stereotypes. With stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. So a lot they make a lot of the jokes about the stereotypes, not just about stereotypes about Southerners, but the Northerners stereotypes too. of, the, of yeah. Northerners as well. Yeah. So you know everybody kind of gets skewered in this. Yeah. And I would argue that just like in the original, that and that's what I mean when I say, and this is very much in the spirit of the original. You don't really, you don't really like the the Yankee characters, like the college students. They all seem kind of douchey. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of the Southerners, like, in the village are creepy and stuff, too, but they're slightly more sympathetic, yeah. I guess. Where they are, they at least have a lot more character. They're a lot more colorful. Yeah. The boy, the, most of the guys in this, the, the, the Yankee boys, are coming into the South to take advantage of what they're saying, poor Southern girls, basically. Yeah. That shit didn't fly. <laughs> not as poor as you think. It's not as, and fucking not dumb either. You know what I mean? And they do kind of make a, a couple they, of jokes about that, about how they yeah. they just assume that uh, that they're all stupid. That they're all stupid and that they're all poor. Uh, yeah. So the, the ghosts, the ghost, female ghosts get back at them. Um, yeah, that gap tooth girl like grows some weird ass looking fucking fangs. nail fangs or yeah, steel fangs or, or shit. something. Starts biting dudes dicks off. <laughs> yeah, she, she was another kind of southern stereotype. You had the two southern bells who kind of like the upper class girls, and then she, her name was Peaches. And yeah, you'd meet you'd meet a girl named Peaches here. You grew up with fucking you could. Her name wouldn't be Peaches. Everybody would be calling her Peaches. I knew a girl that was called Peaches. You, yeah. In the South, you'd see that. She'd live in some trailer park or live yeah. in something like that back in the 70s. I, I absolutely did. That's 70s shit. Peaches. <laughs> you know, peaches. And uh, Peaches would probably look like that, too. Fucking hot. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I said, her... What, the yeah. one scene of them, like, before that, the one, the Chinese girl got crushed yeah. by the bell. Yeah. Um... 
where they were showing them all kind of like dancing around. And Peaches, she's yeah. the gap tooth girl. She hasn't been in a lot of other movies. She's only in this movie. This is pretty much it. Like, and we looked it, her up. Yeah, they looked her up. And fucking, it's just, there's nothing really in social media. Her, she's got her own social media. And she just basically it says, that's my, this is my only movie. And the gap is fake. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. And I everybody's just, like, oh, Yeah. Because I, I like the, the, the gap's kind of yeah. cute. Yeah, but it is painted in. But it, it was. It yeah. looks cute on her. Yeah, she looks good with a guy with a guy. Yeah. Very very Lauren Hutton. Yeah. But uh Belladonna. <laughs> or Belladonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. More Belladonna than Laura Hutton, yeah. Laura Hutton, I want to say. Another Southern girl. But yeah. Uh yeah. so the, yeah, so the one scene where they were running around and her sh- her short shorts, they're denim or they yeah. or were made to look like denim. Man, they were like so far up. I was like, "Oh yeah. my god, that poor girl. That must be just be like fucking yeah. <laughs> that must be like fucking she, yeah. like she's flossing her fucking yeah. she, she's uh, she's like the stereotypical <laughs> wi- uh, fucking deep south wild woman yeah she's something she has kind of like that short choppy hair yeah color, and not wearing much clothes just running around in a bra fucking just barefoot. running around in bra and like tiny tiny short yeah barefoot shit. Wow. yeah and so I don't think she was barefoot all the time but she, she wasn't barefoot she had shoes because she was wearing fucking knee highs knee high stockings yeah that's right yeah but uh, but yeah, so that's kind of like, uh, and also, and when you were talking about like the Southern Belle girls before, yeah. their whole shtick was they would make that nerdy guy, yeah, or you know the nerdy kid, the kid with the glasses. They were sadistic. Yeah, yeah they would they would like just be like make out with each other and, and make then you watch and then make you watch like but not let you get involved. Yeah, and, and just, then like if he started he, then he started jerking it and then they just called him a pig. You disgusting, you pig. <laughs> Which I yeah, they were, they were fucking dominatrix. <laughs> that was like super yeah. funny. But yeah, yeah so the, I don't know. This was just like a really fun. Yeah. It's a fun updating. And like yeah. I said, this is. I'm not a huge fan of remakes, but if you're going to remake something, then this seemed like a good candidate because, yeah. you know, the, the original was so focused around gore, but they didn't really have you know, the the framework or the money or anything like that to do the gory shit that they wanted to do, you could tell. And now that it was 2005, you could take that and just, like, run with it and just do crazy shit of, like, people's eyeballs popping out yeah. and severed heads everywhere and just bodies being pulled apart like fresh bread. And it was just you know, kind of like a fun... And and like I said, everybody just seemed like they were having a really good time with it. Yeah. I liked also that and this is a spoiler uh but i liked that they changed the original ending a tad because in the original if you remember and it's a, you know spoiler alert for the original but that was 1964 come on um you know and it's free to watch so go watch it but in the original like the two of the people get away right because i said well it it's predicated on people getting away because then they have to find out because the whole time during the movie they are thinking everybody in this town is real people and then they get away and then they go to the cops and the cops take them back there and in this case it's just like a big cemetery but then uh it, you know the original movie the two just got away and were like oh that was the craziest shit ever and then they just like drive off into the sunset whereas this one you think that's gonna happen because they go back and they see the cemetery and they're like oh my god all these people were dead but then they try to leave town and uh they get killed yeah <laughs> They get beheaded they, by a fucking barbed wire thing. Yeah, you, you, you think you think that he's gonna make it because he makes it through most of the movie because he's actually southern. And his last name is Lee. Yeah, his last name is Lee. He was <laughs> living in he was just living in the north, but his family was from the south. Was from South Carolina. So the ghost tried to convert him back over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which it kinda worked a little bit, but not really. Not in the end. In the end, because they were gonna they were gonna he had to they were gonna make him kill his girlfriend. That was the only way he could. Yeah. Cause she or the was, girl that he was crushing on. Yeah, but she wasn't southern. Yeah. That was, you know, so you kill her and fucking we'll let you know you, we'll be good. You know. Yeah, we'll. But let he you wouldn't know. do it. But he wouldn't do it. Yeah. Which you know, would you yeah. really? I no. mean, no, most people would. Those ghosts would just vanish anyway. Yeah. I, they, they didn't know they were ghosts. No, they didn't didn't know know until the next day. Yeah. Even though I think, like, well, a couple of people did start to suspect because as the two days went on, like, everybody in the village started looking a little bit more ghosty or a little more zombie like yeah. like they'd start getting kind of like paler or yeah. you know their injuries or something like that would start to be more like pronounced or something yeah. so i thought that was a nice touch too that as the two days went on yeah. like they started looking more and more like yeah. dead people whereas they looked okay at the start 
but yeah, so I like that they changed up the ending. Uh, so, you know, so and nobody got away. And then, you know, basically they're like, well, okay, well, how many more do we have to kill, like, before we can... Because I think, like, uh, Robert England's character gives a speech about, you know, when they can rest. So I'm presuming that they're just going to have to keep coming back. So it's a little bit like a curse for them, even though they're having a good time, until they kill 2001 people, and then they can, yeah. you know, go to heaven or whatever the hell. Uh, so this was... I think this movie actually did not get a theatrical release. I think it just went straight to DVD. Yeah, they were not going to let this play in a theater. Probably not. No. Even in 2005. It was, I kind it was of, over the top in 2005. Well, but you know what, though? Not really, like, compared to some of the other kind of, like, teen comedies that were going at the time. I it's, feel like this is kind of in line with that, but it's just, like, super, super gory. Uh, the story is the South fucking troll in the North. And fucking, True. there's a bunch of fucking co comedy in here that... The North wouldn't fucking like, and the people that own AMC and those chains would not like that humor. One they of my one of my favorite lines yeah. was uh, was the black guy saying, "Cause I like those two like um, singers that like followed yeah people yeah, around yeah, like yeah. singing shit. Yeah, that was yeah, like yeah. pretty funny." Yeah, the fuck black dude, the black biker dude was getting trolled by these two. Um, Bluegrass fucking fiddlers yeah. and shit, and they would fiddle and no, actually it wasn't fiddle. They it was had like guitar. guitars. It was yeah. guitar and a banjo, and they'd sing and shit. They were pestering him, kind of like a mariachi band <laughs> know, at, like, the damn, at the damn Mexican restaurant wherever you go, <laughs> the damn band's following you, and he, he was, he was like saying that. all kinds of shit about crackers and shit. That was because I yeah. like crackers in my soup. Yeah. <laughs> That made me laugh out loud, that line. Yeah. <laughs> There's some funny lines in this. Oh, yeah, so, was... Some of the humor, I think, falls a little flat. Like, it's not quite as funny as it thought it was. But yeah. there are, like, some actually, like, some yeah. pretty good fucking lines in here. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, that even though this just went straight to DVD, and I don't really know how well it did, but it must have done okay because they made a sequel to it oh, all right. in 2010. I'm going to have to see that one. Uh, originally, I think that is also on Tubi, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I've heard it's terrible, but I don't know. <laughs> it probably is. Um, interestingly, it's originally it was supposed to be called 2001 Maniacs, The Beverly Hellbillies. Oh, shit. Uh, but then they later changed it to 2001 Maniacs, Field of Screams. Okay. And now, interestingly, I think, this is what I heard. I don't know if this is true or not. Robert England was supposed to reprise his role as the mayor, but I guess the movie took so long to get made that, uh, you know, it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And I heard that the director, producers, whoever, replaced him in the movie without telling him. They replaced him with Bill Mosley. I mean, you know, he's awesome. he's also an awesome actor. Um, but apparently it was supposed to be Robert England, but various things uh, interfered. So uh, it was Bill Mosley played the mayor. Also, this might actually interest you in seeing it even more. Uh, you know, the guy that was in it, um, that was like the Southern gentleman guy that uh, seduced the first girl cat that got pulled apart. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, part yeah, yeah. in the sequel yeah. is actually played by uh, Ogre from Skinny Puppy. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there's that. Uh, Lynn Shea is, reprises her role in the second one, and the milk jug girl, Krista Campbell, uh, is in the second one, too. But I think those are, like, the only returning part, at least the returning major parts. Yeah. But, like I said, I looked earlier, and I'm pretty sure the sequel is on Tubi, so we might watch that as well, just out of curiosity. It's too bad Peaches didn't make a comeback. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think Peaches is in the second <laughs> one. Yeah, Tom really liked Peaches. He's yeah, like, yeah, she's just, the hottest girl in here. Yeah, just, well, Peaches. That was that was her only movie though. I think she I think the I think it said that she got married. But in reality, I, if you have I mean a, this isn't nineteen fifty. It's like you know you get married and you can't have a career anymore. Is that that, who knows who did, how maybe, who did she marry? Like somebody that pregnant, locked her in a cage. Maybe she got pregnant basement. and had a bunch of kids and fucking lost her figure. You don't know what happened. I don't know. Yeah, but, it could uh, have been that. Something like that. But, I just uh, I always think that's just such a weird explanation yeah. in twenty twenty one. Oh, she got well, married. Kids. I'm like Sometimes they're raising kids, you know. I mean, they don't have to. And, and I don't think she was a full time actress. That's true. Because you know? I, I kind of feel like if you're she kind was of probably a stripper. If you're a big time actress and you yeah. have kids, then obviously you can afford to have yeah. somebody else like take. And care in of reality, them. reality, if uh, in the South, especially back in the seventies and eighties, maybe it wouldn't be so much. And nineties, it would definitely. A girl look like that named Peaches. She'd be pregnant by about. Six, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, wouldn't stop her though. <laughs> be, she'd be twenty-four and she'd have two kids already, and she looks just like that working out at the strip club. Sure, why not? 
Yeah. Hey, girl, gotta, I, girl, gotta earn some money somehow. My my ex sister in law was one just like that. And that's what she did. She was a working down the thing. Fucking hell, already had two kids. Well, like I said, yeah, girl, gotta make gotta pay for these kids. Yeah. Yeah. Their kids are very expensive. Yeah. Hey, you do what you got to do, babe. I'm, yeah. I'm not judging. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if you're, you know, like I said, if you're kind of into just ridiculous, over-the-top gore, mm. lots of titties, yeah, uh, just very inappropriate humor, very juvenile humor, but still pretty fucking funny, gotta say. Like, mm. some of it was pretty fucking funny. And I was like, I really liked all the gore gags in this, gotta say. There's, like, yep. some really gore in this, but it's really good gore. Most of it's practical. Uh, some of the CGI is a little bit eh, like a lot of movies from this era were, but you know what are you gonna do? Uh, but yeah, it's on Tubi if you want to watch it, and if if you've seen it, like let me know what you thought about it in the comments, and that'll do it for this movie retrospective. We will see you guys on the next one. Bye.